Thank you for taking the time to view the Idaho State Department of Education Child Nutrition Civil Rights Training video. Viewing this video provides compliance with training regulations required by United States Department of Agriculture funded Child Nutrition Program agency sponsors and volunteers. You can expect the following civil rights topics to be covered in this presentation. Purpose, training requirements, what is discrimination, protected classes, collections and use of data, public notification systems, long and short statements, complaint procedures, compliance review and resolution, requirements for reasonable accommodations for those with disabilities and language assistance, conflict resolution, customer service. The information conveyed in this training is required civil rights training information for USDA Child Nutrition Food Program sponsors, staff, and volunteers. The purpose of this video is to provide annual training for sponsors of USDA-funded child nutrition programs. Civil rights training ensures compliance, enforcement, and prohibition of discrimination in child nutrition programs. Civil rights requirements allow USDA to ensure that programs provide equal access. Civil rights data ensures that all program participants are treated equally based on the six protected classes. Training is required so that people involved in all levels of administration of programs that receive federal financial assistance understand civil rights related laws, regulations, procedures, and directives. Persons responsible for reviewing civil rights compliance must receive training to assist them in performing their review responsibilities. This training may be carried out as part of ongoing technical assistance. State agencies are responsible for training child nutrition program sponsors. Sponsors are responsible for training their staff, which includes frontline staff. Frontline staff is all staff that interacts with program applicants or participants and those who supervise frontline staff. Training must occur before the staff assumes their duties in child nutrition programs and annually thereafter. Sponsors must document the training with an agenda and sign-in sheet for all participants. The training agenda must include the following minimum training requirements collection and use of data, effective public notification systems, complaint procedures, compliance review techniques, resolution of noncompliance, requirements for reasonable accommodation of persons with disabilities, requirements for language assistance, conflict resolution, and customer service. Preventing discrimination is a key component in civil rights training. Discrimination complaints are defined as any complaint filed by persons, non-employee, organizations, or companies who, based on being a member of a protected class, allege discrimination in a program or activity conducted or assisted. Discrimination occurs when participants are denied benefits or services that others receive, delaying receiving benefits, services, or others receive, or being treated differently than others to their disadvantage. A few examples of potential discrimination may be refusing a person's enrollment in your program based on a disability, failure to provide reasonable accommodation to disabled individuals, serving meals at a time, place, or in a manner that is discriminatory, or failing to provide materials that give non-English speaking persons full and equal opportunity to receive benefits. Child nutrition programs often take place in low-income neighborhoods, where due to economic disadvantage and disparity, children and parents have extraneous circumstances to overcome in regard to their food security. Civil rights are in place to protect children and families from being discriminated against while participating in USDA-funded food programs. The protected classes recognized in USDA-funded child nutrition programs include race, color, national origin, age, sex, and disability. Sponsors are required to report race and ethnicity of all program participants annually. The preferred method of data collection according to food and nutrition service is self-identity. For example, a parent checks an ethnicity or race box on their enrollment form. In the case that no self-identification is made, a visual identification should be documented. Please remember you cannot ask a child his or her race or ethnicity. 
State agencies require annual reporting on ethnic and racial data of participants during the annual application process. Each child nutrition program area has data collection procedures specific to their program. Links to these specific data collection trainings can be found on the Civil Rights tab of the Idaho State Child Nutrition Program website. Individuals required to collect data will need this additional training. Sponsors may develop a system of data collection specific to their individual organization. Data documentation must be kept for three years plus the current year. When obtaining data, both race and ethnicity need to be recorded for each participant. Ethnicity refers to the question, is a person Hispanic or Latino or not Hispanic or Latino? Participants can choose from either category. Race refers to a specific country of origin of the program participant. Racial categories include black or African American, a person having origins in any of the black racial groups of Africa, white, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Europe, the Middle East, or North America, Asian, a person having origins in any of the peoples of the Far East, Southeast Asia, or Indian subcontinent, including Cambodia, China, India, Japan, Korea, Malaysia, Pakistan, the Philippine Islands, Thailand, and Vietnam. Native American or other Pacific Islander, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of Hawaii, Guam, Samoa, or other Pacific Islands. American Indian or Alaskan Native, a person having origins in any of the original peoples of North America, including Central America, and maintains tribal affiliation or community attachment. Please make sure that all program participants are documented by both race and ethnicity. Data is used to help determine areas of potential need and help prevent any discrimination of the participant or group of participants. Sponsors are required to make public via public announcement their program availability. This ensures that qualified participants are aware of the program. Non-discrimination posters must be displayed in a prominent public place such as a lobby, cafeteria, or as a best practice both. Please make sure you're displaying the correct non-discrimination poster. The correct poster has a date of December 1999 in the bottom right corner. Compliance with public notification systems includes following, providing information in other formats for those with disabilities. An example of this may be providing large print or braille menus for those who are visually impaired. Non-discrimination statements must be included on all media mentioning USDA-funded child nutrition programs, including menus, flyers, internet pages, and other food-related program announcements. Equal opportunity must be conveyed when using photographs. Include a good representation of various ages, races, genders, etc. This slide shows an example of a flyer mentioning a sponsor's food program with the non-discrimination statement included at the bottom. This is the new long statement. The first paragraph of the statement includes more protected classes than are recognized by child nutrition programs. The Idaho Department of Education Child Nutrition Programs received approval from USDA to add the last sentence at the bottom of the long statement that reads, USDA Child Nutrition Programs recognize the following protected classes, race, color, national origin, sex, age, and disability. Make sure when you use the long statement, you get the entire statement on your document. If you have not updated the long and short statement, update them immediately on posted materials and in the next printing of all other materials. Printing updates must occur by August of 2014. This slide is an example of the long statement in Spanish. It is important to use the Spanish version in Spanish-speaking communities. This slide is an example of the non-discrimination short statement in English and Spanish. For any document, one page or one sheet of paper, including front and back. 
USDA has a set procedure for discrimination complaints based on instructions in FNS 113. Sponsors are required to make civil rights complaint information available upon request. When documenting a civil rights complaint, the following information should be included. Name, address, and telephone number of the complainant, specific information, location delivering the service, nature of the incident that led the complainant to feel discrimination was a factor, the basis on which the complainant believes that discrimination exists, names, phone numbers, and titles and businesses or personal addresses of persons who may have knowledge of the discriminatory action and the date or dates the action occurred. Sponsors must keep a civil rights binder with the required civil rights complaint documents, including the following. A written civil rights complaint procedure. The procedure should state the organization's policy on how they proceed when obtaining civil rights complaints. An annually dated complete civil rights complaint log, even when no complaints are received or documented. Sponsors should always maintain all copies of annually dated civil rights complaint logs in their binder. Best practice is to keep three years plus the current year in your civil rights binder for state agency review. Copies of the civil rights complaint form in Spanish and English should also be accessible in the civil rights binder. Information in the civil rights binder must be annually updated and maintained for three years plus the current year. A sample complaint form can be found on the Idaho State Department of Education website link found at the end of this presentation. The procedures, logs, etc. are all available on the Idaho State Department of Education Child Nutrition Program's website. This is a copy of a sample complaint log. This slide represents the flow of information when a complaint or procedure for civil rights is being followed up on for compliance. Regional Food and Nutrition Service offices are involved in compliance reviews of state agencies. State agencies are required to ensure compliance within local agencies. Civil rights requirements state that provisions must be made for non-English speaking program participants. For example, enrollment forms or menus may need to be translated into Spanish where it is necessary for families to comprehend. Another example of language assistance would be providing braille or large print for visually impaired program participants. Civil rights requirements state that reasonable accommodation must be made for persons with disabilities. For example, ramps for those in wheelchairs to access food program or food component substitutions for those with medically documented food allergies. Let's take a closer look at the term disability as it refers to civil rights and child nutrition programs. This slide indicates the term disability as defined in the Americans with Disabilities Act of 1990. A person with a disability means any person who has a mental or physical impairment which sustainably limits one or more major life activities, has a record of an impairment, or is regarded as having such an impairment. The term physical or mental impairment includes many diseases and conditions, a few of which may be diabetes, food anaphylaxis, PKU, asthma, inflammatory bowel disease, sickle cell anemia, or cancer. Often there is confusion around the term disability and how it is related to food allergies and substitutions in child nutrition programs. The difference between what is considered a food allergy or intolerance and a disability has a very specific definition when it comes to USDA-sponsored child nutrition programs. Civil rights requirements provide guidance on discrimination issues as they relate to disabilities. Medically noted disabilities differ from medically documented food intolerances. This slide notes the difference a sponsor must recognize when distinguishing between a food allergy and a disability. Idaho's recognized medical authorities include medical doctors and doctors of osteopathy. These medical authorities are the ones who can determine a disability. Sponsors are only required to make substitutions for medically documented disabilities. Sponsors have the option to substitute for allergies or intolerances. An important note, 
Sponsors must keep all medical documentation when noting disabilities and making menu substitutions. An intolerance can be documented by a medical doctor, doctor of osteopathy, nurse practitioner, physician assistant, registered nurse, or registered dietitian. The State of Idaho Child Nutrition Programs provide a standard medical statement form. This medical statement form is available for download on the state agency website under the Civil Rights icon. The process of conflict resolution includes making sure all complaints alleging discrimination on the basis of race, age, color, national origin, sex, or disability must be forwarded to the state agency within three days and must be processed by USDA within 90 days. Customer service involves treating all program participants and their families fairly and equally. Frontline servers should be enabled to provide the best customer service possible to families and recipients of child nutrition programs. Accountability and awareness of discrimination is a key component to good customer service. Let's summarize the important civil rights sponsor requirements for participation in child nutrition programs. Requirements include training all staff on civil rights requirements topics covered today. Document all training with signatures and dates and have documentation available for the state agency to review. Prominently display the And Justice for All poster in a public place. Best practice is to place the poster in both a public entry as well as in the food service area. Collect and record race and ethnic data for all participants annually. Remember data collection can be specific to your program. Please check the Idaho Department of Education Child Nutrition website and click on the Civil Rights icon for more details. Keep all civil rights records for three years plus the current year. This includes maintaining an annually updated civil rights complaint binder containing a complaint procedure, an annually updated complaint log, and a complaint form. Offer meals to all infants and children in care without discrimination and lastly, place the non-discrimination statement on all printed materials mentioning child nutrition programs including menus, enrollment forms, and electronic announcements mentioning USDA funded food programs. This slide contains helpful links to the Idaho State Department of Education website, the United States Department of Agriculture website, the Food and Nutrition Service, and a Spanish translation website link. The first Food and Nutrition Service link directs you to the Civil Rights webpage where you can access the Civil Rights Compliance and Enforcement Instructions, FNS 113 Revision 1. The second Food and Nutrition Service link directs to a PDF of the Civil Rights Policy. On behalf of kids, parents, and our staff here at the State of Idaho Child Nutrition Programs, thank you for viewing the annual civil rights training and doing your part to provide healthy meals in Idaho's youth.